If anyone else wants to crash the system, now would be a great time if you have a crazy avatar that's going to shoot out a bunch of particles. Oh God, I'm out of here. I think it's time to do it. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, hi, Doug. Oh, boy. Thanks oh for God. coming. Irony. Hi, Rennie. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know this was possible. Um, a quick disclaimer, we're not affiliated with VR chat. That's enough of that, right? Gentlemen, welcome to Endgame with your hosts, Nomino, Snail, and Psych O. Tonight we will be discussing law in the metaverse. Take it away, guys. Thank you, yay. Yeah. But, but yes, yeah, Snail doesn't have an O at the end of his name, so it doesn't make know, sense. It didn't, it didn't necessarily make sense, but I had to do it because it was my one opportunity. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Endgame. We're going to talk about, you know, the future, what we think is going to happen. And specifically today, sort of the metaverse, this place that we're all populating together and where this is going to go. How are we going to fucking make this work? How, there's so many of us. We need laws or something to keep us together before it all collapses. But before we get there... We're going to check in with someone from the community and hear what they think about the future. And this week, we're going to check in with Evolved Ant. What's up? Yeah, in, in general, how do you feel about the future? Are you sort of optimistic, pessimistic? Like, what's your general feeling? Well, my general feeling is based on what I've personally experienced so far with the way things are going. And for me, most of the things have been in a positive direction. So I'm more for the optimistic type in that regard. Um, I feel like the way things are going, it's going to be moving in a positive way that helps people because I've met a lot of people uh, in virtual reality that have started off having, you know, everyone has their own baggage, their own issues that they have to work through. And what I've experienced is that the more time they spent in the virtual space interacting with people, the more they've been able to overcome a lot of issues and I think that's a super mm. positive thing. And so I see that the more people who have the virtual space as a sort of outlet where they can express themselves in, in a way that they feel safe and that they can take as much as they want or as little as they want is going to help a lot of people, the more and more people that get that opportunity. So I see it in yeah. the future, it being a situation where there's going to be not only the, the few people who accidentally encounter this, but it's going to get to a point where it's like widely known as something that does that for people. And so I think it's, it's an optimistic view that it's, gonna, it's a good thing. And, and I see it as a positive that's going to keep growing. Yeah. And how long, how long have you been? I think that, that's amazing. I think that's, that's what I see too. And I think you're very unique also because, uh, you know, you also have been around since, you know, I mean, Three and a half, four years uh, in VR chat. So, uh, what's uh, I guess how how has that affected the way that you've seen VR chat change uh, from the beginning towards now? That gives you that hope for the future. Well, initially when I first went to VR chat uh, three or so years ago, you know it was still a new technology. Um, it wasn't as immersive as it is now. And a lot of times people would come in and, and you'd make friends with people, but you didn't really get as close as people do today. Um, mm. Before, when you got close to people, they were like, hey, my personal space, and people would back off. Uh, today, it's kind of switched in a way where it's like now people want to get close to each other and they want to express deeper bonds. And I feel like, at least for me personally, when I came, back to vr chat after a break i took and i seen that contrast initially mm. i had a barrier in front of me where i seen people were able to bond more but i wasn't able to overcome that that wall but once someone else overcame that wall for me it kind of like opened up in the wall came tumbling down in a way it was like oh this is actually completely okay and it's actually really nice and then because of that, I'm able to get closer to people, and that kind of experience made me realize like VR chat is completely different from you know two or more years ago. Now it's turned into people are more comfortable because I think 
the increased immersion with everyone having like hand tracking now and some people even have like full body tracking and uh, we have facial Lip-sync. gesture animation overrides, yeah. lips, better lip syncing, eye track. It all came together to the point where it isn't just some game you're playing where you're like, okay, I see someone in 3D. Now it's like you can actually feel like you're establishing a connection with people. And mm. I think that kind of made it the switch flip over to the situation where you can be close to people and it feels like you're actually having a relationship with people. Like you can bond with people. And I think it's a positive thing. It, it definitely, it's something that comes up a lot. Like a couple of weeks ago when we talked to the anime community, that was like a big part of that talk, but it, it comes up like almost yeah. every week here where it's like, it does make me really optimistic too. Like when I'm, when we get stuck in like the doom and gloom and get scared of a bunch of stuff happening, that this is like one of the main components that gets me pretty excited about the future because it does seem like such a relief. Like you can see it being, just a great relief for so many people in the world and that could have like a significant change is there any way people can like put in information what we can do to improve it or what is kind of like people are having a hard time with so it's just one of those things that the developers can get together and say there's a lot of people saying they want to see this yeah. in vr chat decent like feedback where um a few features sort of go into the canny um, enough people vote them up and then there's, you know, sort of the discussion on feasibility and whether or not we can do it. And yeah, there have definitely been things that have been incorporated just from sort of the community says this and, mm. you know, enough people put together enough votes or whatever behind it and it becomes a thing. It ends up being a little bit more sort of bugs and feature based than some of the other things, which I assume that we'll be discussing sort of the um self-governance and maintenance and like sort of social social concerns and growth pains and Mm. stuff like that doesn't doesn't really seem to be done through the canny which is sort of a i guess kind of the topic here which is how do we how do we solve that how do we build our build our long-term scaling solution for social issues and and it's tricky, right? It's not immediately obvious. Like when you ask that question and you look around the room, like does anyone have suggestions or things that they want? Or th- like we're talking about now because we live in this dimension, we're talking about changing the rules of the dimension that we all live in. Like it's a little bit different than fixing a bug in a video game, isn't it? Like it feels like the stakes are higher, but maybe that's just yeah. in my head. The thing with the canny is that it's more of a feature request bug issue reporting and yada yada but what we're coming to realize is that virtual reality and the social aspect of that is kind of opening doors for such so much more deeper things deeper issues that aren't the type of things you can just say hey we're having this issue here posted on the canny it's turning into like no these are like fundamental things that affect the core issues of like the whole concept of being in a social platform on such a deep level that it isn't something you could just post a a post about and say hey vote on this it's more of a like these are things we should probably discuss as a community because it's kind of all brand new and things that aren't typically talked about because it's like it's a whole new it's like the wild west in a way you know it's like we're Mm. all learning this together and because of that it's like you kind of feel like you want to have a platform where that can be discussed as a community because sometimes an individual doesn't have the best answer for those deeper it's like Hmm. a plumber trying to fix the plumbing in like a whole uh like a warship you know it's like he's him alone is not enough you need a group of people to work together and look at all the different issues involving that plumbing and say okay we need to consider X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and consider all those things together. It's like it's a much more deeper issue than something at the surface level. So I think one of the yeah. things that complicates that is that a lot of the issues that you'll find with social interaction are like rougher issues to discuss and hard issues to quantify and write a bug for where, for example, interaction acting between avatars is kind of a very interpersonal social thing and how do we do this in such a way that you know you're not 
opening up abuse, but also you need to be opening up that humans are interactive people. Like we do, there there is an intimacy that you can experience that you can't when you just phase through everybody. And these are sort of really tricky questions that, you know, how do you how do you even have the conversation about what degree of physical contact? How do you like sit down and write the rules that need to go into programming so that you have sort of like you need to program a consent model mm. sorts of things in order to do these, which is a huge step back and view what do we want like how do we want this world to work and being honest with sort of who we are as a the people and that has a lot of hard conversations. Interesting. Well, I think I I think we should. I mean, that's like, yeah, that's a that, yeah. We're that's we're there. There's no need for like a segue or a transition. I feel like we've we're now into the main topic, right? Yeah. So, uh, what, what are your so, what, what led you to be interested about this topic in the first place? I mean, there's a bit of a sort of up and down history with some interactions that I've had in in the past, but sort of to bucket it all and sort of synopsize and whatnot. But there's is Sort of as I can see it, the laws in the virtual reality sort of space, I kind of mentally split them into, I, I want to call them like physical laws, which are the ones that are decreed by the engineers, the software, the platform. And then there are like the social laws, which are sort of built by the people and how they self moderate. And mm. so I sort of, depending on the interplay between them, certain platforms, have much more strict physical laws where it's say you can't upload custom avatars. Um, and then other places sort of are, I think right now we're trying to figure out how the social laws work, which is where you see like nowadays the hub has these plastered posters that say like, you know, chill out. This is the hub. Don't, you know, don't be too crass. Don't do too many terrible things. And we have sort of um, certain avatars, things like this that, you you can get in trouble for using you don't like put super lewd avatars on and these are sort of this mix of social slash physical things where you can get banned or we can just remove certain avatars from accounts and then on the other hand there's like the social aspects where people will just block you if you're if you're too you know in somebody's face and yeah for here I kind of I don't exactly know how it'll evolve, but I am super concerned that minor decisions made today will snowball. And this will be things like, if it turns out that it's a problem for people to do, I don't know, we, we find that people are going abusive with some feature or whatever, and it, it's causing enough problem in sort of the social level, this will grow up to become a problem that engineers fix and they will fix it by making it like remove that feature or permanently add a thing that prevents people from ever doing this and this is um more are real than i think like is these are, are the these are the of the metaverse yeah these are these are the sort of things where i feel like if it gets to a point that vrc or somebody implements like rules that say you can't do this um that well, is one degree of law law that hmm. well something i sort of thought about while you're explaining all that i think a good example is um physical intimacy and touching like and i don't think it's as big of a deal anymore but i remember when i first came in here there was like do, wait do we still we have an option to turn off your personal bubble right where like people yes. disappear when you get yeah. too close to you it's, and it's i remember that being a big thing in alt space and rec room and whatever yeah, it's uh, big. And sort of like, so the problem is, if we allow people to get close to each other, you can abuse that, right? And you can harass people. And you could easily see that becoming like, there being an outcry, and the engineers just go like, well, here's a solution. You can't get within two feet of a person. And boom, that becomes a physical law of the universe <laughs> now. Yeah. Right? They've made a decision, and now it's built into the physical reality that we live in, that I can't actually become within two feet of you, or whatever. But now they've eliminated this huge component, you know, uh, like the side effect is that we lose the physical intimacy, which is sort of an interesting yeah. component here that like people are like really, you know, getting into. So, well, I don't I, know, is that sort of what you mean? Like that? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That is like exactly yeah. on point. And if you remove these things and the next platform mimics, well, this works on this platform. So they assume personal bubbles. You, you get a, a potential for just, it will take but, years until somebody fixes it. But just, I think like um, at Oculus Connect, they had a, a whole session on moderation and why it's needed and stuff. And I was able to learn about like Oculus is, you know, kind of thoughts on all those kinds of things. And like, and it it's, it's interesting. Like they had, this is a really interesting thing that people put a lot of thought into and that there's like belief systems about, because it is as important as, as what you're saying. It is a law um, and it does influence people's behaviors a lot. Um, but it's also interesting that what is our social contract in VR chat? Like we're all choosing to use VR chat and not alt space right now, for example. Um, so like, why, why are we doing that? And, and what are we choosing to use? And ultimately it is a product of a company that is a truth, but I think that, and so then therefore if the company has influence over the, over the rules of the community, um, that's an interesting and really important thing to talk about. Um, and I guess in the moment, what you were saying too, like, I think that's what we're going to see uh, uh, with this. Like you reminded me of the mute all option. Like when you first log in uh, and you can choose whether you want to hear everyone uh, or if you want to have everyone muted by default and unmute them to hear them. I think that's enough. That's basically the next step of the personal bubble that you can turn on and off. Um, I think that option of, of, of interacting, I think that's going to be perhaps what we see as like a protected bubble to the experience of VR chat, but there's also other domains like the areas of VR chat that um, aren't necessarily about the physical touching and intimacy, but about the psychological interactions that people have. And I guess we have to decide if we're going to be a community or um, a like one community or multiple or what's the rule of law? Are we living in the same nation? Is this like a you know? I think of this as a physical place, kind of, but I don't know. I think for um, platforms, once you get a, or not really platforms, but social groups, once you get up to a certain number of people, you just can't maintain a monoculture. You do have people who will never interact on your platform just because the sheer number of people has has grown to a point that there's the entire anime culture here. There's the, this is a fun game, let's go play this here. There are you know, content creators who just happen to not interact with other people. And you'll have like me and my friends join, just we play together and that's about it. And you'll just start getting um, lots of separate segments that just don't interact. And one of the sort of interesting things is when sections that don't like each other start interacting. So you get like the people who are in the anime bucket with the people who think the anime bucket is weird and whatnot. And you push them both into the hub. We start needing a, you know, a way to co like uh, to solve the the problems that that's going to create. And I mean, muting people goes a certain distance, but and I guess mods go another bit further. But neither of those really feel long term scalable. I don't, I don't particularly well, know also, how we scale past that. What VR is looking at is making, it seems like room creators in the SDK be having the ability to create the law of the land. I mean, what do you think about that as an actual, um, you know, solution potentially? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of hopeful that if the, the scripting and the little additional things that we get here, um, which I mean, that is very here specific, but ultimately you sort of look at it from the higher scale and, the people who make the worlds that you go in sort of build these tools. I'm kind of hoping that what we'll actually see is sort of a, a unified set of tools that are like, if you want, you know, the whoever was in the room first to have sort of these mod god abilities to kick and ban people, then drop this component into your world. If you're wanting, you know, free form flight, creative mode, whatever, drop it into this sort of thing. If you want people shouldn't be able to talk or they should be forced into these avatars. I'm, I, I would like to see that become more of a thing, whereas right now it feels we are under-tooled for a lot of the problems that we are experiencing. So I'm hoping that yeah. with scripting and stuff, we can build better, better worlds. You're sort of talking bigger picture, though, right? You're not talking just VR chat. You're so, like, in the future, when we get there, we kind of want that system. Or do you expect yeah, that to happen here at some like, point? 
I, I do kind of expect the VR chat to be the like the point of contact on, hey, I've got my own world, I can drop in these things, but ultimately like longer, longer term, whenever worlds are not sort of hosted by a single platform and rather I can go get clone somebody's Node.js project and just run a server and point you at, hey, go here and you will pop into a world that I built and I'm running off of my computer. I'm hoping that at that scale of distributed and, you know, worlds are just anywhere and everywhere, you will still have the same sort of drop in moderation, drop in self sort of self governance and things like that so that we don't have to have a single authority that comes in and you request mod and pill has to show up personally in order to make a judgment call like those things absolutely will not scale past i mean i mean maybe today. but maybe in 20 years like pill will be the moderator of the metaverse like there will be a giant red <laughs> smiling <laughs> creature that floats <laughs> around super intelligent. Where are you, pill? yeah Where are you? <laughs> he's always watching um Wait, should we should we take a question from the smooth hip here? Yeah. Uh, oh, the smooth hippo. Thank you. Hello. I am the smooth hippo. Um, well, I think that to take uh, VR chat or a platform similar to this, well, one, I, be I believe that VR chat is why we're all using it, and we're not using something like Alt Space, even though I mean I'm personally not a VR user uh, yet. But the reason why this is so uh, popular is simply the amount of creative influence we could have over it. We can create our own worlds and create the, the crazy, look around you, like just do a 360 and look at all of the, we have a Metal Gear up there. We have some guy with Soul Shader stuff. We have Plankton. This creative freedom, this ability to express is what people are drawn to. And I think the next step is to allow, to, one, the tools are needed. The tools like Snail was saying are needed. And then next, which is an issue right now because I believe everything is hosted on, um, you know, VR chat servers, but the ability to self-govern ourselves, make rules for our own communities. You know, I, 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 can, I cannot say the naughty words here. You know, but once, uh, if, if we get the ability to create our own servers and self-govern ourselves and then get the tools to do the self-governing, then we can have... Uh, true thriving of communities. Do, do you imagine those tools look like what he's sort of talking about? That if you have the freedom to create a world and then you have these components that you drop in that create the rules, is that all you need? I mean, that, that's a good start. But as we see here, this, this game has an amazing amount of uh, ability to alter it as it is. So the ability to sort of create your own tools would be a great thing to add. You know, more, more creativity, more freedom to mold the game to how you and the community you're aiming to sort of cater to um, will thrive. So the, the way that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the tools that are incorporated, but the ability to edit and sort of mold the game to how your community would want it. Because that's, that's where I see these things sort of taking off is the ability to make, for people to make their own worlds, their own communities. You know, it's virtual reality. That's it's a reality that isn't governed by the laws of our physical world and not by the laws of our social world. It's that's sort of what you were saying, or maybe that's maybe that's just what you told me earlier. But like you want us to go in that direction where these components we're talking about are community made. They're not just dropped down from on high. Like it's not VR chat that says, right. here's the six components you're allowed to do. It's like what can the community come up with eventually? And then how do we uh, that's sort of what I mean by like I think VR chat's gonna be the point of contact. I, I'm thinking that VR chat, in order to scale to its own, its own like critical mass, we're gonna have to start handing out like, look, world creators, you want this kind of moderation tools, you want uh, the host should be able to kick people without a vote or something like this. Here's a component, and this will be where you start seeing like, okay, here's your first six components of self moderation, and when you know, at some point in time, a spec or some standard or whatever gets it to the point that you can now hop outside of just the VR chat bubble and I can run yeah. my own thing. These will be the, okay, great. Somebody is going to build that tool for that new platform. Yeah. But I think here's where we're going to start experimenting with them. 
Yeah, that's what you were talking about too with uh, uh, Playmaker, and I think that's what we're going to see is, uh, you know, I mean, look, this this app used to have a uh, avatar, the marketplace or whatever, where you could download different things, and I think I could definitely see moderation tools being something that are shared amongst people for room creation, as amongst other things. Like Playmaker is going to really change VR chat, I think, in a really awesome way because of what we'll be able to build um, and. These kinds of, I think that's a really good point that you made uh, about that. Is that these kinds of tools are going to get really sophisticated, and you know we can reproduce them uh, like we can in Unity. To get to where he wants to go, like, do we have to remove that point of contact of VR chat? Like, ultimately, does this have to become a more universal thing, or can we allow one platform to become the main platform? Like in my mind, I'm imagining Facebook. Like Facebook takes over; it becomes the point of contact for everyone. And a lot of us hate Facebook, but everyone uses it. Like, is that what's going to happen? Like, what what happens here? I mean, my my personal view is a bit different from that. I view it closer to VR chat becomes um, sort of the effective equivalent of a browser, where you have Safari, you have Firefox, you have Chrome. I think that you'll have VR chat, which sort of allows you to have custom avatars and allows you to build these sorts of phone structures and allows you to connect to these kinds of servers. They'll have their own set of things where like VRChat can host a handful of worlds. It's slightly like Chrome would have a handful of pages that it can just go to, that's fine. But ultimately I think that you can't scale planet scale very well on one platform. And what needs to happen is a platform that doesn't have a a single point of failure where that single point is a company just when it's when it's such that anybody can go clone a repo and build a world and connect it to anybody else's worlds i think that's the much more sort of self-healing kind of internet of worlds that will ultimately take place i think right now we just have here's a single server or here's a single platform really that allows you to sort of like, as long as you're connecting here, you get all of these worlds. And then mutually exclusively, if you connect to alt space, you get these worlds. There is no, I can't drop a portal to an alt space world. Alt space can't drop a portal to a VR chat world. And I think that fundamentally will eventually go away. And the only way to scale such that anybody can go anywhere is going to be just not having a single point that is a single company or a single ownership model. And so like with the identity thing for Facebook, we still log in through email or GitHub or whatever other platforms people want to roll their own. But yeah, I, I would assume that there will be a predominant like, oh, well, pretty much everybody uses this enter the like virtual network of worlds through this client. When you're talking about, you know, personal space, like earlier, um, one other thing I'm also running into is like, you know, people do crazy animations. Like I saw somebody at the end of Gunter's Universe do a spooky scare skeleton with thousands of particles of that character dancing. Do you think that should be illegal? I don't think it should be illegal. I think it should be a toggle, you know, turn off uh, animations and that. Like, also custom sounds that you can put on your character. Like, I've experienced a couple times today where my ears are shattered from loud noises. That is really annoying. And I think that, uh, I think... uh... That's why I like, for now at least, that VRChat has canny dot io uh where you can go to their uh, uh you can suggest things that other people can upvote too so that's really important i think you should post that there uh, I, i'm not on there it is there, so is that not already there something like that that must be being addressed to some degree right i would assume because like stuff like a loud noise okay like i was playing duck season the other day and it scared the fuck out of me right and like you can, and I think we've all had experiences in VR where it can be extremely intense. Like this is a powerful tool that we're wearing on our heads. And so like if you abuse it by 
whatever your avatar makes a loud sound to scare people or something even crazier just like yeah. blinking lights or something that might give someone a seizure like you could take advantage of this to some degree i wonder how yeah, soon that will be I mean, addressed yeah i think you're making an important point about the power of it um i think like the psychological experiences that we have in vr chat um you know i mean it can cure ptsd you know vr virtual reality can recreate things and cure ptsd for people so um yeah, I think it could probably give people uh, PTSD. It's really powerful. Yeah, PTSD. exactly. That's actually, I think that's a huge risk. I definitely think that can happen. And I think people who, uh, I mean, look, the touching thing, I think, can be very hard for some people who, if they've had a traumatic experience and they have that same physiological reaction to being touched, then not having the personal bubble could cause a, could be a huge trigger. Um, and I've had that with patients where I've known that the, that the bubble's on and I'm more comfortable and I'm with them in the hub or something like that, uh, because I know that they're not going to get uh, necessarily triggered um, in that way. So I think that uh, it's, you know, these kinds of things are uh, kind of necessary in, in, in certain ways to help the psychological experience of the community be the best that it can be. And people ultimately want to come back because that's also why alt space, I think, isn't as populated is that it feels different. The The psychological experience of the application is different than a VR chat. And that, that's an important thing that um, and like you're saying, Snail, weaving that into the code, that's what's happening. And, you know, that's what we talked about with culture, too, that culture, that the culture is being determined a little bit also by that. So it's it's interesting. Awesome. Yeah, should be there be warnings on certain worlds? I think that would be yeah. really cool, especially if it's like what you're talking about, where a lot of the rules are implemented by the people creating the world. So you can give, you can warn yeah. people ahead of time, like you're entering this world. Here's what's going to happen if you're affected by A, B, C, blah, 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 blah. That would be great. Yeah. But, uh, yes. No. What were you going to say? Your... I was going to say with your particle thing, that kind of. That, that kind of reminds me of, I think that we should have something that's slightly like ad block, but for your person. Like, <laughs> I would like to be able mm. to do things like, I don't ever want to render more than 100,000 particles total, or no person should be able to render more than 5,000 particles. And this should just be for me. This should be a, I want to turn down graphics settings, or I only want to render the... Like people I mean, don't know is... really how to moderate. Like, do you think everyone would have the accessibility to those underlying, like, granular changes, or do you think it would be kind of summed up in options, like right. in the system setting that they're turned on and off, kind of thing? Just an advanced options right. button, you know. Um, so, as as a world creator myself, um, I, I understand, and an avatar creator as well, who's kind of gone over the limit at some points with, uh, let's just say over polygon avatars and particulous uh, particle system avatars and you know, all this stuff, it, it kind of becomes a test to see how far you can push it. And, you know, I never intend to do harm with any of it, but I also don't think of all the consequences that might also come of it. So let's say if I build a world that's supposed to be spooky and scary and I don't tell people about it and people come complaining to me because it's spooky and scary, I'm like, oh, well, I guess I should have put that in there. It's it's the fact that you're building it and it becomes an oversight that you didn't think um, that most people are trying to, you know, enforce this, you know, where, how do you say it the best? It's like it's to try to make you think thing. of every, yeah, it's supposed to be yes, courtesy, courtesy and everybody should be there for, you know, should be there automatically, but people don't think about it because they're enjoying so much doing it that they don't stop to think mm. about, you know. Oh, this might be if you know, can, dangerous to somebody. I'm curious if you can solve a lot of that with like how we have, you can get sort of game reviews by people who have played this game mixed with a combination of like, you sort of know which areas are the bad parts of town, sort of large scale, I like in the gamey sorts of things, you do have to solve that problem. Like browsers will do things like, this is probably a malicious domain. This is probably a bad world, but that is that is but, far more in the future, and I don't see that in VR chat in the yeah. near future. I boy, I never thought about um, like so Raven's comment about the toggle. Like my reaction was at first to reject that. Like I hate the idea of you giving me advanced options where I have to decide my experience by this like you know checking a hundred boxes or whatever. But when you say ad blocker, 
that gets me a lot more excited because like it's sort of like you're taking the law into your own hands to some degree it's like what do you want to um like like what what the, what what triggers you and you, and you put it all into some kind of program and it says okay now you're never going to see those things again and then we're going to get into these perfect little space. bubbles it's like a virtual safe space yeah, and then we're all gonna. Yeah, it's mean, gonna all this whole <laughs> things are gonna get much worse because we're we're all gonna just disappear into a bubble, and we're never gonna see anyone Imagine. we don't want to see or hear anything we don't want to hear. And love life's gonna be great. It's gonna yeah. work out for everybody. Well, that's what I, that's what I like about Snail. What, you, what you've been saying about this idea of like kind of you know we're thinking. I'm thinking about Reddit, for example, that has like subreddits that are moderated, and Reddit does have some rules that are that for all communities they can't follow, which has been they've just introduced that, which is controversial. But overall, it's the kind of same thing where people can. So it'll be interesting to see if like that is so that they're safe communities instead of just people walking around with the same community and not you know but it is that a good thing is that a bad thing i mean i like how vr chat is one community i think it's a really valuable thing about it that i that i think makes it have such like what evolved is talking about with the positive impacts of what vr chat has i think that that's uh a lot because of its being one community and people are introduced to other people from other communities and there's interaction and and you know it becomes a place where people want to come together um and it's grown from 20 people getting excited about 20 people on a sunday to um 200 people logged in at any time and that, that that's a big change Thought i kind of have while you guys were discussing um just forms of governance and sort of the mod administrator structure i think one of the uh one of the things that should be thought about, like the, the thought that I had while you guys were having a conversation is like, why don't we have like a VR chat police department? Um, and I, I, I thought that idea through. Like it sounds kind of silly, right? But what, like we're a group of people who are interacting with one another. And like, why does that, why is that any different than the real world? Like, why do we have police departments in the real world? It's to control these sort of poor interactions or bad interactions that hurt people. Um, in a way that we all agree upon. But I think so. That's the role. I don't think that's necessary. right now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They're the police. Yeah, it, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like, but, but you know what it is? That's like, that they're automating the laws. I mean, that's what we're seeing in the real world as well with legal systems where automated sentencing and things like that by judges and using algorithms and big data to determine things. I mean, we're seeing code be related to the legal system. Um, so it's interesting that you're making that point because it's kind of similar to um, some of the parallels of what's happening in the real legal system. The metaverse legal system is mirroring in some ways um, the dynamics and the practicalities of real world legal systems. But, but sort of staying on the idea of policing ourselves, um, that is something that we've tried to – like w – I don't want to, you know, criticize VR chat too much, but like it, it, eventually we want to get to a platform where something like that happens, right? Where like there could be more moderators and we could like moderate, like how, how will that work in the future? Ideally? I'm not entirely sure that I can think of a nice, like global scale moderation tool. I think that when it, it starts to turn into a thing where if I build a world and other like I build a world, I throw it up on AWS or whatever, and people can go in and play or whatnot, and something happens in there. I'm like, I'm not sure exactly who's supposed to be responsible for maintaining the happy environment. Right. Is it He's... is it me? Like, I don't want to police that. That means I'm now personally responsible for everybody else's interactions on my platform. Right. And I say that, but it also is a thing where we do find things like the people who run VR chat are themselves responsible for what we do on this platform. If we upload a bunch of Disney stuff and VRChat gets sued by Disney, VRChat is responsible for what we do on here. So, I mean, it may totally be yeah, a thing where I... people do have to personally police the worlds they build. Yeah, that's why I'm really excited that VRChat... <laughs> yeah. The, the checkbox that says i have the rights to upload this comment you check that yep, yeah that, exactly and, and looking around everyone knows yeah, everyone's crazy. obeying this this is all original ip yeah but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vr chat has that's the thing that, that's the thing about vr chat is that it's a company and they have, that's what i'm so excited about and i think that's why we've seen it be so successful honestly um is that you know um the you know started with jesse and graham and then now ron is the community manager who's really in charge of 
developing these kinds of things in these. And I think that the approach that they're taking, for example, of uh, making worlds moderate themselves is kind of a really interesting way to address exactly what you're talking about, Snail. Um, so I think it is ultimately like we're riding a wave that has been constructed for us that began by an idea uh, you know, that Graham and Jesse originally had and created and just built, and then it's grown continuously from there. And that's like, I don't know. I mean, that's like they're trying their best, I think, to navigate um, how and what to make. And I think it's interesting. A lot of people have a lot of suggestions. And I mean, I remember th back when they had the old UI that was like, looked completely different than what we have now. And everyone was always talking about the UI. They're like, oh, we're working on a UI system. We're working on this. Like, you know, they're a small team that has to prioritize what a, you know, ha like, for example, the, the safety bubble is kind of a tr like a serious traumatic thing that can happen to someone that, that was immediate attention paid for the moderation. Uh, and so they're having to prioritize what they're doing. But I think that the path that we're on um, overall, the culture that exists within VR chat, the success that it's had and it, all those things are really strong indicators of the team that's building it. And that's the entire team. And, you know, so I think that's, that's, that's what's so exciting is that we have people who are in charge of this that I think are trying their best to listen to the community and do, do those kinds of things. Um, and I think this kind of conversation is really valuable um, for, uh, for them to be able to hear and listen to and get the input of the community in general about what, you know, what are these topics and what's important? Cause like what's important to us is what's going to be, um, you know, that's an important thing to listen to. Obviously it's a community and it's the user base and everything. So you hear that like Ron, Graham, Jesse, <laughs> and also if you're watching right now, like this video and click subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, Ryak, any, anything yeah. else? Did we sort of address that? I think VR chat affords us a lot of very interesting alternative means of governance that wouldn't be possible in the real world. Like, for example, you could point your finger at me with your menu open and click the tick button, and everyone in this room will get a democratic anonymous vote to kick me. That's something that takes weeks, months, or even years in the real world. And I think it's important when we discuss, like, how should we handle these situations to consider what VR chat affords us as a class. Yeah, that's why it's so tricky. Like, these are all new. Like, this is just a, such a new experience. It's growing like, pains. Yeah. I think it's the growing pains, yeah. Let me just let me just add uh, a little piece to this. Um, as someone who is a, a known content creator and makes a lot of crazy avatars that do a lot of crazy stuff, um, I think that we have to <laughs> recognize so that VR chat still is kind of a beta software. It's not like a hundred percent. I feel like implementing all these systems to restrict what you can do in a community that right now is filled with tons of people who are getting very interested and want to learn and learn Unity, learn Blender and learn all these tools and see what can they do. You don't want to suddenly put a, a, this big wall in front of them and just make like, nope, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. And nope, this person might might see it, but this person has it configured differently and they might not see it. And you don't know who can see it and who can see it. When you have everyone configuring themselves differently on what they can and can't see, then you're not going to want to make anything because you don't know who is going to see it and who's not going to see it. And then in a situation where people are learning and still learning what they're doing, you you don't know what's a bug and what's not a bug. Uh, is that a, is my thing showing for you? Is that a bug or is it your settings? Oh, did you check that? It's, you're going to make this complete mess. Instead, the better option would be to have a system of three levels. Level one, a setting where you only see default avatars. And if someone is in a custom avatar, it puts them in a default avatar. And that's the level where it's like, I don't know, I'm not comfortable mm possibly getting exposed to custom avatars or getting exposed to something that reduces my frame rate. I'm very sensitive to motion sickness. Okay, you can be at that level. Then the next level beneath that is like, okay, now you get the custom avatars that have been vetted. The avatars have gone through some sort of system that evaluates the performance of the avatar. And if it matches some metric, guess what? You're on level two. And then you can set your settings so you can see all the avatars that met level two. And then the final level is this stuff completely unfiltered where it's like, okay, I'm at a state 
where I want to see everything, that's level three. And then it's such a simple system where I can easily look at someone and like click on them. And not only does it show me their name next to it, it could show me, hey, what level are they on? Do they see me as I think they see me? So that's, that's my little piece I, of reason. I like that's that. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like, like the um, current state where you're talking about <clears throat> that sounds not knowing if it's working for anyone else is basically like the current state of web development. Mm. Yeah, you don't know what it looks like on Safari or whatever unless you personally go look at it underneath that lens and you know, yeah. people have yeah. to play that game currently. I think it's going to be kind of a slow process, man. I have a problem with only like VR chat. Because again, I love the community inside of VR chat. I think it's like amazing and great. And it's the people that put in the effort and their time to actually like getting stuff inside of here. But I feel like right now it's very difficult for it to become an actual like metaverse because there's not mm. like a fluid form of uh, integration to being able to just like have um, models inside here quickly for people who aren't really into like, you know, knowing how to do full on game design, like going through Unity, having to like go through this process of using a separate program, take off their VR headset. There isn't like a form or function where I can just like start building stuff around me and having collabor collaborative building and, doing it, that sort of thing. So I feel that kind of is like a really big limitation um, for VR chat right now, because right now the social aspect is amazing, but it's lacking the free imagination that you can actually have for allowing well, for, um, you know, things to actually be pushed to their limit to actually make a metaverse. So yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that's a really good point. Like that people have to be able to create what they want and be able to do it in a way that's easy to them, uh, which includes those kinds of, uh, yeah, user -friendly. The, yeah, yeah. Make it more user friendly. But I also think that what we're looking at is analogous to artists writing their, writing a song that's a cover of another song that's very similar to the other song that's a, that is the other song but has their own artistic touch to it and when a, when an artist writes that um that song they can perform it to other people to like you know the, the socialization is a performance in some ways so you know if we keep it limited to building in unity and and creating as an artist something a piece of art that is shared with others that's more like fan art type of stuff that Perhaps it'd be easier than if you walked into the hub and there were Disney characters that you could choose from in the hub that's been built by VR chat as opposed to like the kind of community uh, building of yourself. Perhaps that's kind of a um, a line to draw a, a, a distinction or something. I, don't know. I didn't get the impression you were sort of talking about pedestals where you go and click and you become an avatar. You, you kind of want like a room you go to for beginners and they can create, like, they don't have to leave VR chat, right? Like you go into a room. And you can yeah, sort of in game building. Yeah. Is that is, yeah. In, that's wor in world in world construction, which I feel is like really important for a metaverse and also like being able to uh, profit from it, being able to have like a monetary system inside of the virtual world, because then that actually increases the uh, creativity and makes people like more motivated mm. to actually c create compelling stuff for the virtual metaverse. Because if you don't have those sort of like pushes to actually make amazing stuff or get people um in the industry like people who make stuff for like turbo squid or something like that they're not going to feel like oh why why would i want to um bring stuff inside of a world and not have it like free and then i'm not really yeah you know, do you understand what i mean it, it, it's not pushing people yeah, and no, you don't it. have like venues or you know, you know what i mean i mean yeah that's yeah. important i think that's i don't know i like i really like that suggestion um and I feel like that's a, is that a nugget? I mean, is that, is that enough? Do you, do you a lot that? of that stuff I sort of assumed is going to be true to be eventually, ended. right? Like, I, I think there's a lot of ideas that we've talked about that, like, I, I think that, like, for if, like, specific, if we talk specifically about VR chat, if they don't implement some of these things, I think eventually that means something else will come in that will and sort of supplant them. And so it's up to, but we're sort of still in the beginning where, we got to take it easy. Like, you know, this is all new territory and like, they can't just be flipping things around every day. Right. Like we have to like 
crawl in a in a direction. But I'm hoping all this happens. Yeah, like some two. of the stuff we talk about, like I don't think is going to happen for maybe a decade. Like I'm kind of imagining like some of this is really <laughs> far <laughs> off. I, like I want it to happen, but yeah, it's not easy. Uh, before we end it officially, like I just want to snail. We, we there's a lot of stuff we didn't get yeah. to today. But is there anything you want to say to close this whole thing down? Or I am really looking forward to like helping watch the the creation of all of the laws of the metaverse sort of be explored and decided on as we as we sort of move forward on VR chat. So that's I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. We're living through the whole. You this do. is it, man. Like. This is the process. It's, it, it's cool. Is, and this is, you know what? This is the end game. This is the, these are the rules that are going to, this is the final medium of conscious existence. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, let's do it different. Let's maybe line up against this wall just so it's different than all the other pictures we took. So everybody head over to this yeah. wall. I, I want to see Cactor or something. I want to see one of these summons. Okay. But Cactor doesn't stay still. So be quick. Yeah, he'll do it. Yeah, I got you. What do you take me for? A, a, an a camera? Videographer thing? <laughs> hey, thanks oh for God. coming. Hi, Rennie. Hi.